Where's the old smiley twins? <clears throat> Their son died last night. Did he? Oh my God. Did they kill it? And the Oscar goes to Six Shooter, Martin McDonough. In 2006, Martin McDonough accepted the Oscar award for his very first film, Six Shooter. Today, McDonough films are some of the best known. Just last year, he made Banshees of Inishirn. Are you coming out to the pub, Colin? A couple of years before, we saw the release of three billboards outside Ebbin, Missouri. And of course, there's In Bruges and Seven Psychopaths. I'm keeping it. All of which have been nominated for dozens of awards. However, his only Academy Award win still remains from his very first film. So what made it so special? No! Before I get ahead of myself, we need to go back a little bit. By 2004, Martin McDonough has already established himself as a great playwright. In the last five years, he has emerged as one of Britain's most acclaimed playwrights. Two years ago, he matched Shakespeare's record when four of his plays ran concurrently on London's West End. Despite the success in theater, he felt as if it weren't his true calling. Naturally, making films seemed like the next avenue to try. The whole point of it was to to see if I liked it or to see if I wanted to do it, I guess, just for myself. Having an already distinctive brand of absurdist comedy and heartbreaking drama, Martin McDonough set out to bring his playwright style onto the big screen. Uh, we shipped off to Southern Ireland, found a train, which is a really stupid idea to set a movie on a train, but uh, we did and there's no going back after uh, we were over there. The film wastes no time establishing its unique mood. But your wife passed away at three o'clock this morning. Following this, the film shifts to Donnelly's train ride home, where everyone aboard seems to have been struck by their own tragedy. And this is where McDonough's style becomes the most recognizable. We start off with his Tarantino-esque dialogue writing. Why is it you never get tall, jockeys? Why are we sort of midgety sort of fellas? Then we have McDonough's signature characters. They're both multidimensional and complex. The idea of an older, wiser man being partnered with someone who's still ignorant of how the world works and who's essentially his younger counterpart feels similar to the mentor-slash-student partnership between Brennan Gleeson and Colin Farrell that we see in Bruges. You, you said he was a lollipop man. He was a lollipop man. What's a lollipop man doing on fucking karate? While the exploration of grief and the lingering effect it has on both individuals and the wider community is very much a precursor to free billboards. It's hard to know what to do the day your husband kills himself. So my mom got murdered last night, but you don't see me off wailing like a spa. Even individual characters feel like test subjects, with the unnamed kid, a troubled loner whose unassuming exterior masks a shocking level of death, feeling like an early version of Barry Kilgan's Dominic from The Banshees of Inner Sheeran. My daddy says he's gonna kill your son there. We're spilling the beans about that. Didn't know what, mate. And of course, all of this is brought to life by the amazing performances. You get the now familiar non-challenge reactions by Gleason opposing Rudrick Conroy's character, who is just the polar opposite on the personality spectrum. He just blasts through his lines like a maniac, and while the situation of a recently widowed man being forced to sit next to a kid eager to tell a story of an exploding cow is hilarious, McDonough manages to turn the situation on its head by revealing the kid's mother was recently killed. While before the twist, the audience might have judged the kid as a wannabe edgelord with dire social skills, McDonough uses this encounter to showcase how truly complex humans can actually be. But Martin's somebody that never lets you get away from the humanity of the characters as well, you know, he, he stays away from judging them, he stays away from just vilifying both these men and, and shows that there is a human cost, an emotional cost even personally. By the time the main character arrives at his destination, the body count of this journey has increased to levels that such a short runtime should make impossible. But McDonough packs more than enough comedy into the proceedings to stop things from getting too miserable, thus showcasing his masterful ability to balance both comedy and drama. Oh, and in case you're wondering, the film does include a story of an exploding cow. Cow fucking exploding! <laughs> It's easy to look back on Six Shooter as an elaborate proof of concept. 
It runs for just 27 minutes, but McDonough finds time to hit every point of his creative checklist. First of all, there's a story that mixes realism with absurdity, morally flexible characters who are always engaging and often relatable, there's themes of guilt and existentialism, and an overwhelming amount of black comedy that makes its exploration of the human psyche more approachable. All concepts that Martin McDonough would spend the next 20 years iterating. No matter which later McDonough film you choose to watch, Six Shooter's impact will be present. And while Six Shooter itself might not have the elegance and mainstream appeal of McDonough's later films, it is still worthy of attention, having not only acclaim from critics, but also being the film to have earned McDonough his first, and so far, only Oscar. I'd just like to thank everybody who is involved uh, in the film, uh, especially Brendan Gleeson and Rory Conroy. Oh, and just in case you wanted to see it, it's actually free on YouTube. But before you go and do that, consider subscribing or dropping a like if you enjoyed this video. And yeah, I will see you in the next one.